uh, Hin is the um, the gender specialist of uh, UNFPA in Morocco. Um, and I had the pleasure of meeting her when I was visiting Rabat uh, in September. And uh, the two of us created a bit of a storm in the, <laughs> in the Morshida Institute where they were training these, um, these female spiritual leaders. Um, but uh, Hin is an, a great asset to the Moroccan uh, office of the UNFPA. So Hin, uh, proceed with uh, your presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Uh, on the outset, I'm, I'm delighted to be with you today. And I would like to thank you very much for uh, giving us this opportunity to participate and for inviting me uh, to your uh, uh, to today. Uh, I would like to thank Rosa for the documentary, which gives a uh, an interesting picture about what's going on, uh, about gender norms, about how Morshidat are, are fighting uh, these norms, etc. So if you if you agree, I'm gonna uh, give a, a quick national context to give the audience some idea about the country. Uh, then I'm gonna list the main challenges that we are facing. And I will conclude by presenting our, our engagements with the, a faith-based organization to promote uh, women's rights uh, and present you the main results. Is that right? That's fine? Yes, yes. Yes, yes that's fine. Yeah, please proceed. Okay. Uh, so Rosa's film gave us uh, an introduction, a uh, quick introduction about the, the, the country. But I, what I would like to say that we are facing <laughs> Uh, let's say a paradox, because during the last decade, uh, commitments confirming the determination to entrench equality values within institutions as well as within the society have grown in number, uh, while remaining uh, within a coherent and, conver and convergent framework. So these commitments have resulted in legislative reforms that include the establishment of policy frameworks, measures to increase women's political representation, uh, confirmed examples of gender equality and institutionalism within government departments, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et and among these progress, uh, I'm going to quote some of them. Since 2002, we uh, had uh, the adoption of a national strategy to fight gender-based violence, as well as its operational plan. Uh, for uh, with the C CSO's partnership. And by the way, Morocco was the first Arab country to adopt such a strategy in the region. In 2003, we had a reform of the Labour Court, which introduced the principle of non-discrimination in employment, the criminalization of sexual harassment, and extended the maternity leave duration to 14 weeks. And uh, in 2004, we had the famous reform of the Family Code, which consecrates the principles of equality and jo joint social responsibility, as well as the same age of marriage for both girls and boys at 18, but there were a provision permitting uh, exceptions, if authorized by the judge. I'm going to come back to this point later. And in 2007, we had a reform of the Nationality Code, who gave Moroccan women the right to transmit their nationality to their children born with foreign fathers. Uh, consequently, in 2010, we had the first support chain uh, for victims of gender-based violence. So we have, uh, in 2010, this support network with UNFPA support which is a chain of services, uh, which is a unique mechanism coordinated by the Ministry of Justice to access to justice, uh, justice services with the Ministry uh, and partnering with the Ministry of Health for Health Services, uh, Police Department, National Security for Protection, and CSOs for uh, Shelter. We also have actually a, a government equality plan adopted in 2013, 
uh, with the involvement of 32 relevant departments, including to address gender-based violence and to promote gender equality. And all of these achievements since 2002 have been consolidated globally since 2011 through the new constitution we adopted on July 2011, where several articles of this constitution uh, use the phrase male and female citizen uh, and confirm the gender approach in drafting the constitution. We had the, the famous article 19, which ensures the country's commitment to gender equality in all the fields, economic, social, political, civil, and environmental. Because the previous constitution of 1996, uh, equality was only on political rights. And this new constitution, equality is in the five fields, in all the rights. And of course, we have other provisions in the constitution uh, consolidating or productive rights, uh, including the right to good health, to social protection, medical coverage for all citizens, etc. So, as a conclusion, Morocco, in terms of human rights, Morocco is part of the main international conventions of human rights. CEDO uh, and CRC were both ratified in 1993, and all CEDO reservations were withdrawn in 2011. And the only reservation on CRC was withdrawn in 2006. And recently, uh, in this year, Morocco ratified the CETO optional protocol. In addition to this, uh, continuing on in the human rights framework, uh, on uh, the Universal per Periodic Review, but following the adoption of its uh, national report under the second cycle of the Universal Periodic uh, Review mechanisms in May 2012, the country submitted a midterm re report reviewing the outcome of the follow-up of the implementation of the recommendation of the second cycle and it submitted it in june 2014 actually we are supporting uh, the country to to submit the its second reports by 2016. Uh, so this is the human rights framework so as i said there's a paradox in spite of all these progressive reforms we still have many challenges due to those social norms that are deeply rooted in the society. Uh, I'm going to give some figures to give a figure over the Rosa's movie or documentary. For early marriages uh, represent 11.5% uh, of total marriages in 2013 which represent in volume 35,000 cases. So this is due to this exception in the family code. Even if the age of marriage for both girls and boys is 18, families uh, try to, to, to put pressure on judges in order to obtain this exception. They, sometimes they marry their children and then when the girls get pregnant, they go to the judge and seek the authorization. So this is more or less how it goes. Uh, now we have this almost 12% of marriages, child marriages. As a correlation to this rate, adolescent fertility rate is high. It represents 32 over 1,000, according to the last survey in 2011. Uh, what about gender-based violence? The first national survey on the prevalence of violence against women was published in 2010, 2010 and showed that 62.8% women have been subject to violence in one form or another. It includes uh, legal, uh, economic violence, it, it includes the five kinds of uh, violence. Uh, one thing that was also uh, in uh, Rosa film we have seen is the low woman participation in the labor market. 
this rate has not improved during the last 10 years. It's still at 27%, which is very low, and in spite of all the mechanisms or the facilities government is putting for women, etc., it's still, this rate is still very low at 27%. And this, this is a big challenge because it is linked, due to many surveys, linked to the conception of social roles of women that she has to stay at home to take care of the family, to take care of the children. And what is really uh, uh, actually... Uh, Hind, Hind, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do you mind uh, yeah, quickly yeah. getting into the Morshedet, please? Uh, because we yes. want to make sure people know about so the So I, I finished with the context. Uh, now, to, f to, to fight gender-based violence and to, to promote the culture of equality, we engaged with a faith-based organization in 2010, uh, which called Rabita Muhammadiyat Ulama. As a part of uh, our organization's uh, uh, direction, which considers the involvement of men as a fundamental enabling to bring change and to ensure sustainability of action undertaken, and especially to engage with religious leaders. So very quickly, uh, the partnership started by, the, uh, I'm gonna list some of the main uh, steps in the process. We produced a toolkit uh, on integrating sexual and reproductive health, human rights, gender equality, HIV AIDS, HIV AIDS and fighting gender-based violence in the religious discourse. It was developed in, tw in 2011, and it was revised last year, in 2014, to introduce, to respond to adolescent and youth needs. So starting from this toolkit, we, tra uh, we trained, partnering with the Rabita Muhammad Ida Ulama, 70 religious leaders, including women, in the whole country. It was kind of training of trainers, and themselves they trained local Morshid and Morshidat, because uh, we have Morshid and Morshidat, male and female. Uh, based on this toolkit, they received this training, and in, 20, uh, in 2012, they prepare, we supported them to prepare uh, an action plan to target three categories of beneficiaries. The first, uh, the first category is uh, adolescents, boys and girls in Islamic traditional schools. The second are prisoners. And the third beneficiaries are women and girls in women's centers. So at the, as of end of 2014, 570 Murshid and Murshid were trained. 40% of women, and they started implementing their action plan on the ground uh, since last year. So as of today, as of end of 2014, 200 adolescents from traditional schools were sensitized, uh, including 20% of girls, and uh, in women's center, 5,000 women were sensitized, and in prisons, 3,117 prisoners were sensitized, 30% of them are women. So this is very globally our experience with the Murshidat. So after uh, preparing the toolkits and ma making the training of trainers, we are actually in the, in the phase of implementing on the ground uh, uh, and, and uh, getting in touch directly with beneficiaries uh, as I have given the results uh, in you. figures. Thank you very much, and I'm sure that there will be many questions. I